Hey y'all. Well, today we got something special. A video like we don't normally do, but we're in Sedalia, Missouri at the Newmar International Rally. And yes, you may hear some golf carts going uh, behind Stacy and stuff as she films, but um, we're bringing this to you because this is something that you don't often see. We're here at the rally and Freightliner Custom Chassis here, here with Robert and Bobby Wayne. I'm gonna let you tell you, tell, let them tell you what they actually do for Freightliner, but they have a full chassis here for you at this rally. And it's, you know, people don't realize how important, you know, you go to buy that that floor plan or you go to buy the certain brand or whatever, but a lot of people don't even think about the chassis and the chassis is where it all starts. Very important. There's a lot of differences and stuff and they're going to explain to you today. We've got a brand new chassis here, something they just introduced to that you're going to start to see in the marketplace. But Robert, uh, thank you for doing this oh, video. First of thank all, you. Thank and you. Bobby Wayne, Thank you for being there. Yeah. yeah. Well, Robert, what do you do for Freightliner Custom Chassis? What? So I do dealer marketing and training. So I try to get out to the dealerships and talk to the salespeople and explain to them what the chassis is and, and how it works and functions. And You know, as you said, most people don't realize this is the most important part of the RV. If your slide isn't quite working, you can still keep moving. If your right. couch isn't very comfortable, you can keep moving. If this breaks down, you're stuck on the side of the road. Right. So, and this is about a, th a third of the cost of your RV. Yeah, and and you also do you meet up with clients or the end user because you you work rallies and yes, stuff. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Like that's why we're out here. We like to talk to the end user. Uh, you know, we sell to the OEM. The OEM sells to the dealer. So we're we're far removed from the consumer, the end user. That's why we like to come to these types of shows and talk to them and see what we can do and what kind of changes we can make. One of our slogans is driven by you, meaning you, the customer. So we hear all kinds of ideas at these kind of shows. Yeah, so that's great. Getting people's opinions and some of the things they've been seeing out there or hearing or whatever. Absolutely. I mean, just for example, the, the digital dash that came out in 2020, that's already been updated two times based on customer feedback. No, we want to see DEF right in it. We don't want to scroll for it. So that got changed. Uh, we have we use Mercedes-Benz research, so they'll come out and ask questions. So if there's something on that dash you don't like, talk to your fellow RVers. <laughs> that, that makes sense. And we have the digital dash. Yes. Uh, Bobby Wine, I'm going to let him tell you what he does. But just real quick, he was our instructor last year at this rally last year. It wasn't here in Sedalia, Missouri. But we took his class. So, Bobby, tell him. So I do. Uh, I work the RV rallies. Go around to all the RV rallies. And just as you mentioned, I deal with the end customer. Uh, answering a lot of questions around the chassis. Also, I'm a training manager for our uh, Camp Freightliner class. So I teach our Camp Freightliner class. We have a two-day course that we put on and encourage RVers to come to that class and learn about their RV. Uh, even if you're not going to do your own maintenance, you need to come and learn exactly what you're going into a service center and asking for. Um, that is a key. A lot of times, you know, I hear by teaching the class, I hear uh, a lot of the RVers or when they come into a service center and they'll say, I'd like to have our, um, my RV serviced. Well, the next question that service rider is going to ask you is, well, what would you like to have done? Well, I just cringe when I hear operators say, well, just whatever anybody else has done on their coach and... Uh, uh, so I'm sitting there thinking, well, why don't you just sign a blank check, hand it to <laughs> yeah. them, and say, uh, just do whatever you think's necessary and make me feel good about it, and I'll be okay as I go up the road. It's not actually, that, that's not the way it works. I want to teach you and educate you on what you're asking for, what you actually are getting when you get service, and for you to be able to ask the technicians questions so that you can learn and grow and make sure that they've done what you actually paid for. Yeah, and Stacy and I can tell you firsthand, we took this class from Bobby Wayne, and it, yeah, it sometimes it feels like you're drinking from a fire hose because uh, there's a lot of information that he puts in that class. But one of the major things in that class too is he teaches you the few components that you should really carry with you at all times. 
it's so important because these few components could save you and get you off the side of the road uh, much quicker than if you don't have them and you're sitting there dead and the guy comes out and figures out what it is and then he's got to go get the part you know so that to me was worth a lot too and and it's yeah it's a little bit of money but boy that little bit of money is going to save you a lot of money if you ever have any of these things come up and it's all the common things so that's it's well worth your money camp freight liner is what it's called right and, yes camp freight liner and how yes. can is it just rallies because i know with COVID it kind of changed no it's not just rallies mm -hmm. uh you can look for it in any of the rallies that you may go to to see if um uh, you ha they have a class at that rally uh but you can also go on our website website f rv online and you can go on the website and you'll actually pull up the calendar and you see we have virtual classes we have classes that are available in gaffney south carolina that are in-person classes and I'd like to talk a little bit about that for a minute. So sometimes people are intimidated by the, the virtual or they tell me that, you know, they're not sure if they'd like to take a virtual class. A virtual class is just as good as doing an in-person class at Gaffney, South Carolina. You can actually log on to your computer um, at home or in your RV. All you need is good internet service and the day before we do class, I spend about 30 minutes with everyone. I set up a Zoom meeting. We'll go over it, teach everybody how to get their audio working and their video working, and be ready for the class the following day. So, uh, and then the people who have taken it have told me before, uh, I thought I wouldn't like this virtual class, but man, this is great. I didn't have to travel anywhere to do it. I can do it at my leisure. So. I encourage you to take the the virtual classes. They're just as good as the in-person classes. And then in-person classes, if we're having a rally, just like I'm doing this week with uh, Friday, uh, Saturday and Sunday, we have the chassis here. So when we get to the section about going over components, we can actually walk out, go over the chassis and look at it. Yeah, that's um, nice. So that's nice. And some of the virtual classes even nice to where we show pictures and go over it. The key to this class is I don't want anyone leaving the class that don't get their questions answered. And uh, that's the key. I want to make sure I educate you on your RV so that you have good luck going down the road. And when you do have trouble, you understand what to do and how to, how to react to trouble you might have. Yeah, and just so you know, uh, before you take that class too, when you sign up, you're putting your VIN number and stuff so uh, Bobby Wayne knows what chassis you have and everything else. So usually when you get to the class, he knows the parts and the part numbers that you're going to need if yes. you want to order that emergency, what do you call that? We call it a survival kit, but yeah. it's actually not a kit that you can come up and say, I want to buy that kit or it's in a box. We actually put that kit together specifically for your chassis. So. You may have uh, a different fuel filter or a different oil filter than what your buddy has or your neighbor has. So we have to take the last six digits of your VIN number, look up what your chassis was built with, and then be able to provide you the parts that goes with your chassis. Um, and just as Tom mentioned a minute ago, you want to keep that survival kit and you want to have those items which is serpentine belt fuel water separator fuel filters and a simple thing is a hub nut tool um, the hub nut tool looks like a water filter wrench and i've even had a gentleman in class before it said oh i didn't know what that was for i thought it was a water filter wrench it didn't fit any of my filters and i threw it away <laughs> it actually fits the nut that is in the center cap of your dual wheels and you need that so that when you have a tire issue on the road when your roadside service comes out then they can use that tool to take the nut off to take the center cap to be able to change your your tire without messing up the nut on the um, center of that center cap okay enough of that other talk let's look at a chassis <laughs> yes. so i'm gonna let these guys tell you because they're the experts so bobby wayne so we were talking about survival kit earlier so we let's these are your fuel filters here this is a rear radiator coach, so your fuel filters and fuel water separators are always going to be on the right-hand side, down near the transmission, 
mounted on the, on the rail on the uh, rear radiator coaches. Side radiator coaches, you'll, all, you'll see these two filters, they're mounted at the very back, very easy to access. Open up your back hatch and they'll be right there in front of you. So we're gonna talk about some of those items that you would wanna look at changing. So is that so, easy to change, by the way? Do I just unscrew that right there? Or? So, no, it's not that easy. It's easy to change. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say it's not easy to change. It's easy to change. It's just messy. So you want to have a, a spill pan. When you take those filters off, you're going to have fuel that comes out. So you don't want to get that fuel on the ground, and you don't want to get that fuel all over you. You don't want to take a diesel bath, okay? So it's just changing those filters out can be very messy. So... You're, and you're always going to want to have fuel to go back in these filters when you put them on. You don't want to introduce an air pocket into your fuel system. And then when you go to start the coach up, it'll start up, run for about 30 seconds, and then shut down because you lost the prime on the fuel system. Good question, though. Yes. I mean, how do I... How do I carry fuel like that? What's your recommendation? So part of your kit that you're gonna to put together. You're gonna to get you a tote from Lowe's, Walmart, Home Depot, Menards. So you take a gallon container, put you some diesel fuel in that gallon container. Then you're gonna get a tote and you're gonna set that gallon of diesel fuel in that tote, put your filters in there. I wouldn't recommend putting my belt in there, your serpentine belt, put it in a separate compartment and then you can put that serpentine belt in a Ziploc bag. You don't have to have a food saver bag or, or vacuum or anything like that. Main thing is keeping it out of the UV rays of the sun, put it in a compartment, put it in a bag. But that diesel fuel and those filters inside that tote, so if anything was ever happened with that gallon container and the cap came off and it was bleeding yeah. out fuel, then it's contained inside that tote. Now, you don't want to call that gallon around for five years or three years <laughs> right you're going to want to change it out about once a year pour it in the coach then put a fresh gallon of diesel fuel in your container because just like def yes it, it does have a shelf life right you don't want to just haul around old fuel okay yep. okay so let's move on to the next stuff so one of the uh one of the most neglected filters on an rv chassis is the air dryer filter so we can see it right here. It's mounted on this uh, Ventana coach uh, chassis here. It's mounted up underneath. It's right behind the drive axle. This one's right at the tag axle because we have a tag axle on this chassis. It's mounted up high. It's a spin on filter and you want to change it out every three years. Now, sometimes people lose focus when we tell them about pulling drain lanyards. It's not so important that you pull those drain lanyards once a month, every two months, as it is that you keep this filter changed. This filter changes out every three years, and just like it says, air dryer filter, it is drying the air in your RV system. The condensation that builds up in the tanks up front that you're sitting on top of that you never see, it's actually drying that moisture out of those tanks as it cycles as your air cycles through this air dryer pulling the drain lanyards is a backup okay you just want to pull them six months or a year anytime you think about doing it pull them just to make sure that this filter is doing the job properly i've seen people come into our service center and this filter has not been changed in seven years so this filter has a paper cartridge on the inside. If this filter explodes, then where is all that gonna go into, Tom? I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna go in your air system. It's gonna go all in your air system. And this thing Doesn't has- sound good. No. This no. thing has coadescent beads in it. So they're gonna go all through your air lines. Well, these quarter inch lines that we have on there, those beads are gonna get wedged up in there and you're gonna pull all those quarter inch lines out. Now, everywhere you go to a half inch line or three eighths line or three quarter line, you can disconnect it, but the bead's gonna be blocking whatever component is supplying air to. Anyway, it all adds up to money and labor at a service center that could cost you 
thousands of dollars. This filter runs about 95 bucks. But I think a professional probably needs to change that filter from what I'm looking at. Well, it's hard to access. It's not that hard to change. Anytime, if you are a do-it-yourselfer and you do want to change this, make sure you don't have any air on the system. Bleed all the air out. Go to your brake pedal. Pump your brake pedal till you see your gauges at zero. Then you can screw this off and change it out. But just as Tom said, it's better sometimes to let the professionals do it. <laughs> yes. Because you guys don't want to be crawling up underneath that coach and always, 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 we don't encourage you to get underneath your coach. But if you do, always have jack stands mounted up underneath your axles because we don't want anything to happen to your health. We don't want you getting crushed. That's for sure. So what's next? So you're gonna change out your coolant. If you have the new system, you're probably never gonna change it out because it's three, a 600,000 mile coolant change. So you probably will never change the coolant in this RV unless you contaminate it. Now you're gonna contaminate it if you put tap water into it or if you put a different type of coolant in it. So anytime you add water to your cooling system, always make sure you're adding distilled water. And you wanna have a 50-50 mix. 50% of distilled water, 50% of concentrated coolant. Okay, don't just put concentrated coolant in here. Dilute it down. You can get the pre-mix already diluted, Rotella, um, oak coolant, extended life. That's what it comes with. If you have anything older than a 2017, in 2016, November of 2016, we changed and went away from the SEA coolants, which was um, anything before that, it changes out every five years. Rotella, SEA coolant, it's a purple color to it. This uh, extended life is always a red color. Yeah, now, that, that's Tom, good. You, you'll go 600,000 miles, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, we're full time. You know, we travel all the time, but I don't think we're ever going 600,000 miles. So that's good to know. So yes. that you've made that mainly a, a non item now. You don't have to worry about it except to make sure the levels are high enough, I guess. So that's nice. So this is your air cleaner. This air cleaner, don't get it confused with air dryer. This air cleaner is gonna be changed out every two years, okay? You wanna change it on a two year cycle. Now, so many people take this filter off and they'll look at it and they'll say, well, that filter looks brand new. But the issue is you have a spiral silicone glue that keeps the filter spread apart so that it has the fins. The glue is what deteriorates over a period of time. So after two years, that glue breaks down. Well, that'll let the fins on the filter close together and it's just like it being packed with dirt. You don't have air flowing across that filter. So you're starving the engine with air. So when you starve the engine with air, you lose power. If, you got, if you're losing power on your RV, the two main things to look at first, air cleaner, when it was changed out, fuel filters when your fuel filters have changed. Now this is your serpentine belt right here. This is part of the survival kit. We want to make sure that you carry a serpentine belt with you because once you break down on the road and you call out a road service, then a lot of times they arrive and they'll say, well, I don't have that belt. I got to go back and see if I can find one in town. Well, you're paying that guy the whole time he's running up and down the road. So if you carry one with you, you can say, I have the part, I just need your labor. And I'm pretty sure you probably don't want to attempt putting on a serpentine belt and a rear radiator coach. If you notice the gap between the belt and the radiator shroud, you don't have but about maybe 12 inches. Very difficult to do on the side of the road. Now a side radiator coach, you open up the back hatch, you can look straight in, you can see the serpentine belt, very easy to change carry a half inch drive ratchet with you with about a 24 inch handle on it. That way you have plenty of leverage so that you can um, open up or move the um, tensioner 
so that when you put that belt on, it's spring-loaded, then you let it back off and the spring holds the tension on the belt. And that is a no edit undo. If that belt fries, you're going nowhere. Right, because <laughs> you're not yeah, gonna you're turn yeah. you're not gonna turn your water pump, you're not gonna turn your alternator, you're gonna be running hot, or you're not gonna be getting charged to your batteries. Yeah, so yeah, that's a definite good one. And now I have a question. Right here is obviously the def tank. Yes, sir. My question is why are they black now? I mean, mine's clear, so I can at least see through there. Why did they go to black? Any idea? Yeah, there's some things, uh, time that de deteriorate the deaf fluid. Okay. One being sunlight, other being heat. Okay. Extreme heat can do that. So they all have a shelf life. Every fluid of deaf has a shelf life, uh, either on the box or if it's going in the big container. And as Bobby Wayne says, try to go to a place that goes through a lot of the deaf, you know, a big truck stop. Right. Pilot, Flying J, something like that. Now, if you're stuck somewhere and you're in a small city uh, out here in Missouri, get yourself just a little bit and put it in to get you to the big truck stop. So, right. Tom, also, too, I talked to a customer here that just came up earlier today and he was talking to me about, he said, I always try to keep that death tank full. I don't want you to practice keeping that death tank full. Yeah. What I want you to do is run this death tank down to about a quarter of the fluid in the death tank because what you got to think about is if you fill this def tank up every time you stop and get fuel. Now the fuel ratio to def is 50 to 1. So for fifth, every 50 gallons of fuel you use, use one gallon of def. With the exception if you're not running an ISX 500 or 600, then you use more fuel, you use more def. Okay. okay? Yeah. But you don't want to practice keeping it full all the time you, no. because if you fill it up every time you stop to get fuel, then you're putting maybe less than a quarter tank of new def in on top of old def, and you're not diluting and mixing old def with new def. So you want to run that def down so that you're putting three quarters of new def with a quarter of old def. Yeah, that's something we learned in the class, too, and right. that's what we've done ever since. Hey, what about if you're storing it? I'm going to put this in storage for six months. You're going to want to make sure that you store it with a full tank of DEF because you don't, if you notice at the pump, when you get fuel at the, or you get DEF at the pump when you get your fuel, if you notice around the nozzle, you'll see all this white powder. Yeah. Look, all over the nozzle. Well, that's DEF that's crystallized because of the air hitting it. Air is your enemy. So air will cause that DEF to crystallize. When that crystallization happens on the inside of that tank, if you don't store it full, then all those particles fall down into the DEF when you start down the road into vibration, okay? Yeah. If it sucks up one of those crystals into the nozzle before it actually gets dissolved, then you don't have a DEF nozzle spraying, what we call a spray, into your uh, after treatment device you may have a straight stream. Well, it can't ignite. So then you're gonna start having problems with it flooding more death in there because it's shooting a straight stream instead of shooting a mist. Makes sense. You're building a fire in that after treatment device to burn out all those carbons to turn them into ash so that they can go out. Yeah, that's a good tip. And, and also, didn't you say, um, like in the class, with your fuel, that uh, if you're going to store the coach, that you should store yeah. it but with the, the full next, tank. Next question, yeah, yeah. Full tank. yes, yes, same thing. Again, air is your enemy. If you store your fuel, if you store it with a quarter tank of fuel or a half tank of fuel, then you open it up that air pocket. Okay, air will feed algae, so algae starts to grow on top of that fuel. Then you start getting the slimy green into your fuel filters. What did I say a minute ago? Yeah. You lose power when you don't have a good consistent fuel flow coming through your fuel filters and your fuel water separators. You get algae around those filters, you can't flow full fuel through those filters Makes sense. as easy. Yeah. So you lose power. So make sure that anytime you're going into a campground, if you know you're gonna be in that campground three months, six months, before you go in, fill it up with fuel. And death. And death, yes. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately we saw a lot of that during COVID. People right. didn't realize it was sneaking up on them. You're getting ready on a trip, you have it half full, and now it just sits there. 
for six months, a year, maybe two years before you use it again. And now you start to see all those issues. A lot of problems. Yes. So yeah, good tip. Okay, we ready to move on to the next? So that's pretty much it as far as a quick overview of some of the maintenance items you want to look at. Uh, we can show you the drain lanyards if you want to walk up and look okay. at the tank. Yeah. Like I said, these drain lanyards is one of the last things that you want to do. You want to focus on keeping that filter changed. These drain lanyards are here. You have two on the left-hand side, one here. Robert can yep, show one that right one over there. Over here. Oh, wow. Then we have one on the right side. It's sure easier to find them when there's nothing else around it. <laughs> yes, well, yes. The, key to, the key too is I tell a lot of students in class, when you get your chassis, they're not going to be pretty and shiny and gray like this because whatever bodybuilder you have is going to spray undercoating all over this chassis. So they're going to be black. Well, you're looking over the top of the wheel well over the top of the tire and they look at you look in there, you're looking in a black hole, you don't have any light. These are black, you can't find them. Lower your jacks all the way down. It'll separate the bodies from the top of the tire. You have more of an area you can look into. Take your flashlight, shine it in and find them. Once you find them, get you some neon tape or even if you wanna get neon spray paint and spray the end of this cable so the next time you start hunting them, they're easy access Great. for and, you. And you should pull that how often? Six months to a year. Okay. As long as you're keeping that filter changed, six months to a year. So you're pulling this side, yep. this one or this one, right? No, both. Oh, both. you do pull them both. All three. And you no have one on the right hand side. Okay, so you need to pull all three of them. And if you have a brake sink system on your coach, which goes to your tow car, we have a drain lanyard at the very back at the trailer hitch, and you want to pull it too to empty out that small paint tank at the back okay excellent that's now, I, I hear people at the factory a lot of times they'll say oh just remember one two three what is that what's one two three on well, maintenance so on one two three actually it needs to be extended to five well some of us aren't as smart as you about no. the on the maintenance <laughs> side. <laughs> so i was sharing this information with somebody and, and they didn't get the last two okay so uh, one is changing every year you're going to change your fuel filters fuel water separator and you're going to change your oil which means you're going to change your oil filters also two is every year every two years you're going to change that air cleaner that we just talked about a minute ago three you're going to change that air dryer that is connected to these tanks for these drain lanyards for the air in your system yeah four if you have a 2500 2000 or 2500 series transmission you're going to do the transmission fluid and filters. Five, if you have SEA coolant, you're going to do the coolant in five years. Or if you have a 3,000, 4,000 transmission, you're going to change that fluid and filters every five years. So, Robert, now it's one through five. Not one year through one, five. year two, year three, year four, year five. Think you remember that's, that time? That's you awesome. <laughs> okay, so we also have My 24-7 Direct. Uh, this is an app that you need to have on your phone. It does multiple things. One, it'll track your maintenance. So once you have maintenance done, you put in the mileage and the date, it'll track it and let you know when is the next time you need to get in for service. Right, in case you can't remember that one, two, three, four, five. five. That's right, that's yes, one year, every two years, that's correct, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so it's for people that don't want to worry about all that. It'll be green if you're good. As you get a little closer, it turns yellow. And then when it turns red, you're overdue. But this will list all maintenance that need to be done. For your particular for chassis. For your particular chassis, yes. You can even look at all tasks, and it shows at 500,000 miles you need to have something done. So it yeah, goes from everything from every year to oil change all the way up for the life of the coach. Now also, there's a phone number on here. That phone number is good for the life of the coach as well. 1-800-FTL-HELP. And it is our men and women in Gaffney, South Carolina that answer that phone. And they'll help you with anything related to the chassis. And it doesn't matter if it's a 2000 coach. We had a 2000 coach come up uh, this week and started asking questions. And didn't know that they can still call the 800 number. They just need the last six of the VIN. And also on here is all of our service centers throughout the country. All 450 service centers. 
you can look it'll tell you what they specialize in their hours uh, one of my favorite items on here is dash lights oh you yeah click on there and you find the dash light that's on and you hit that button and it tells you what that means what it means because bobby wayne and i we get calls we say we have this uh light on my dash well what does it look like well a deer jumping over a sign and it's yeah. kind of fun we have no idea what <laughs> yeah, you're talking sure. about <laughs> right so right. You, you click in that button this is all your tag axle needs this done we've looked them up before yeah so we sure. used to get a call a lot that we would have a green t on the dash so we would be calling each other saying what's a green tea on the dash have you ever seen this come to find out it was one that we put in the icon we put in to let you know that the antenna on top of your coach is still up you need to roll it down before you take off oh wow and you know the 1-800 number is awesome we've called it before they're very informative they're very very helpful you know it's a stressful situation when you get a check engine light and stuff like that happens and you don't have to just sit there and diagnose it yourself. You can call Freightliner and they are there and they do help. We've yes. had that happen on more than one occasion, but not with the coach we have now, but an older coach. And I mean, yeah, it's, right. it's it, nice. It can be a simple question. You know, on the old LBCU dashes, we'd get calls and people say, how do I change this clock on my dash? You know, the time just changed and they're trying to change it and they can't figure it out. So they call the 800 number and ask them. Yeah, that's good. So that's one of the biggest items that we have that people come up and they ask us, uh, why should I buy Freightliner? And our number one answer is because of our service. And that 800 number is part of our service. That follows our the coach that you have. If you sell it to John Doe down the road and he's got that coach, he don't have to sign up for anything. He can call 1-800-FTL-HELP and he can get help. It follows that coach. And those people that answer those phones, we got like 16, 17 of them during the day. Then after five o'clock in the evening, we got like nine and they, work from their home the calls go straight dispatched to their house and if you want to call them at one and two o'clock in the morning wow they, they yes. can you know there's somebody's gonna answer the phone somebody's gonna answer the phone on christmas day somebody's yes. gonna answer the phone on easter uh, they're gonna be there to answer the phone to help you while you're on the side of the road so 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year and don't just call when you have problems call when you have questions that you need answers because these this is a bank yes. of knowledge yes these yes. guys really know the product that's really cool well we've covered all that service stuff and but they have some exciting news still this chassis that's behind us is something that they uh brought out in hershey pennsylvania, hershey, pennsylvania. Did, we, uh, we did, introduced it yes yeah we're yeah. talking what when was that a month ago or something yeah mid-september so yep. yeah yeah, less yeah. Than a month ago yeah, yeah. let them know what, it, what yeah, it's all so, about so it's our new b-series suspension system it's completely new into the market it's a whole new category uh so i'm sure many are familiar with b-ride b-rides our rear suspension system which has been around for almost 10 years it really took the roll stability out of the coach. So if you have something before 2015 and you want a better ride, go test drive one. So we took this to the next level. We put it on the front suspension system. It's VFS and they tie in together to give you the best ride quality there is. So the idea was to make it ride an I-beam, ride like an independent front suspension. And that's exactly what it did. So our engineers and R&D, they said, we want this thing to ride like a independent front suspension at the cost of an eye beam. Wow, and that is a, how, how can you see it in here? Yeah, so you can see here, we put it right here on the spring hanger, uh, VFS, and uh, you can see the V blade right down here. This is the V link, I'm sorry, V link in the front, V blade in the rear. And so what it did is it helped the roll stability, 70% better roll stability, so you're not rocking. Uh, it gave a better ride, so your ride quality is like an independent front suspension. Uh, it eliminates any bump steer. Do you know what bump steer is? No. When you're going down the road, you know, we do have a few potholes in this country. Yeah. You know, and you hit that bump, it, the steering wheel doesn't jerk. It keeps it straight. So it's Size. working underneath. Uh, and then it also brake dive. Are you familiar with brake dive? I don't know. So if you're going and you slam on your brakes, you're pulling forward like this and your coach is going down, this stops it from going down. So when you hit the brakes, you're stopping this way. 
That's nice. Now this isn't replacing uh, independent front suspension. It is not replace, replacing independent front suspension. You can't call it I-beam. You can't call it independent front suspension. It fits right there in the middle. So, brand new category, rides great. Uh, we, we have them out in the marketplace now. Most manufacturers have them at the dealer lots. Okay, so they do. They're, they're starting to build RVs on this yes. now? Yes. So as we were going through this and we were doing some testing, we test all our products. We don't just come up with something and put it on there. We test it and test it and test it. We test it to death. But uh, one of the guys that was driving some of it and doing some of the testing, he come out of the coach and his first comment was, man, that thing drives like a car. Yes. Wow. So that's how good it drives. That's the turning radius it's got. It's just a smooth ride. It is really a neat feature that we've come up with. You know, another thing, in a month or so, you're gonna see a video that we did at the manufacturing facility. And the reason why we hadn't put it out yet is unfortunately we lost the, the video, did, the audio did not come out on that. And we're gonna do a voiceover on it because it's so fascinating, the facility there in Gaffney, South Carolina. But they, they've got done a whole new remodel and one part of it that I was so impressed at is you, you see all these chassis and it's incredible. But they have this humongous area that's nothing but engineers. You you see these chassis and you think, oh, okay, they designed that up 15 years ago. No, they've got a lot of engineers that are working on improving their products, coming up with more products. I mean, they're just constantly innovating. And that's pretty incredible. It is, and it's a lot of work because it, we are custom chassis. Yeah. So if you're a manufacturer and you say, I want this, and next manufacturer doesn't, we manufacture it for them. Oh, whatever they want. So now the engineers, it's not something you just pull a piece of paper out time and say, here you go, put this on this chassis. The right. engineers, and not only do they engineer it, they test it. So everything goes through durability testing. Uh, equivalent to 1.1 million miles. Oh, wow. Sure this stuff lasts. Yeah, so that's really cool. This is a, a neat new uh, chassis y'all have gotten. I guess you'll probably be seeing it real soon at the in your, because now I guess it's going to the manufacturers. The manufacturers have to put some houses on top of it. Yes, but, yes. Well, yes. we did a soft launch with Tiffin uh, just to make okay. sure everything was working. So almost all Tiffin product now out there will have this on there. And then a lot of the other manufacturers, uh, Rev, for instance, they have quite a few out there. Forest River has it. Uh, Coachman has it, Newmar should have it. See, well, Newmar's right here, so get, this will go right to the factory. So all the, yeah, all the manufacturers will have it on there. That's awesome. So we're gonna tell you one more thing. We just came up. Uh, we're gonna get Steve, who is part of the, uh, the Freightliner. Um, FCOC, Freightliner Chassis Owner Club. Yes. Which we're members of, and we need to get more into. Let's, let's talk to Steve and see what that's all about. He just had me walking by. What a great yeah. man. <laughs> he didn't know he was going to be on camera. <laughs> Steve Jennerette and I am one of the vice presidents for Freightliner Chassis Owners Club. This is kind of ad lib, so just bear with me. <laughs> it, it is for me. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> we are an organization of roughly 4,500 coaches, and all of the members have coaches that are built on Freightliner chassis. Freightliner uh, Corporation helps sponsor us. Some of the benefits that you get for a whopping $15 a year membership <laughs> fee is that uh, if you do have service work performed at the Gaffney Service Center, the uh, you will get a 5% discount. If you get service work done at an Oasis Freightliner dealer, you could get up to 10% off uh, if they are participating in the program. You uh, can get discounts at O'Reilly Auto Parts, 10% discount for what they call the back counter items. Uh, you can get uh, Michelin Tire Purchase discounts. Oh, wow. Similar to what FMCA does. We, we just started that program not too long ago. Uh, you can buy Daimler Chrysler products for practically dealer invoice or maybe even a little bit below. Uh, there are some restrictions, but I think it covers most of those I products. I wish we would have known that when we bought our Jeep. Bought our Jeep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Could have saved a few thousand. I know that the new Jeep pickup is covered because one of our members did buy one and got a substantial discount. Wow. Additionally, you also uh, will be allowed to attend four of our national rallies a year, which at every one of them, Camp Freightliner is taught by Mr. Bobby Wayne starts yeah. here. 
which is extremely popular at our events. We also have educational seminars at the, those events. Uh, usually we'll get representatives from companies like Michelin and Allison uh, Transmission, Cummins Engine, Onan Generators. So it's a, a, you get education, you get food, you get entertainment, just generally a lot of fun. So I uh, highly recommend everybody join because like I say, for $15 a year, you can't get that kind of entertainment <laughs> or that kind of value anywhere. No, if you if you use any of those services, you way more than got your money back. Right. I guarantee you on tires, you're going to save $15 in about two seconds. Mm -hmm. But uh, thank you to all you guys. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you for coming by. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Steve. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. 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 And Robert, and uh, if you like this video, let us know. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments. If we can't answer those questions, we'll make sure that Robert or Bobby Wayne or even Steve, if it's about the club, uh, helps us answer them for you. And because um, this is a big topic, it's very important. A lot of people. They don't think about the chassis when they're buying an RV, but they absolutely should. We chose a Freightliner. We love Freightliner. There's Freightliner dealerships all over the place. There's a lot of places to get service. So that's one reason why we love Freightliner because it's so easy to get service if you need it. We like to go to South Carolina and get it at Gaffney, but sometimes you're not close to there and you need to find a place and they're all over. So. So if, Steve, maybe you'd want to share the website for oh, the FCOC yeah. that they, yes. anybody maybe want to join the club. FCOCRV.org is the website and give you all the information you need. Uh, schedule of upcoming events. We have our 2024 rallies already planned so you can uh, check the dates on them. And as we get closer to each one, then we open up enrollment for both the uh, rally and for the class that uh, is taught there. So That'd be again, great fcocrv.org excellent so we'll put all that stuff down in the show notes too in case you weren't able to write them down there and i guess until next time y'all safe travels and happy camping bye